All right, on this section, this is going to be good information if you're a beginner or you're, I'll call an intermediate user. We're going to cover a lot of ground here. Uh, we're going to talk about the basics of programming your radio, and then we're going to get into some fun stuff of um, ways to update your radio. All right, if you compare D-Star to regular FM radio, some people will say D-Star is complicated. Actually, it's not. If you look at a regular FM repeater, what do you have to do to program a frequency? Not a repeater, a radio. What do you have to put in the radio? You have to put in the mode, which is FM, the frequency, the offset, if you're running tone squelch or tone in any way, and the tone frequency. D-Star is just a little bit different. First, you're going to go a different mode, DV for digital voice. You're still going to put the frequency and offset in, just like you did on your regular radio. You're going to program your own call sign, or in the case of a club uh, radio, the club call, but you're going to program a call sign in there called my call, or my, M-Y. And you program it in that one time for that radio, and you don't have to change it unless another user is going to use that radio or your call sign changes, something like that. What we're going to focus on for the next few minutes are these three fields. You are, and it definitely means you are, then repeat one and repeat two. Now, that's not a whole lot different than the FM side, but if you're like most people, can you program your radio from the keypad? Any radio? It's getting a whole lot harder, isn't it? So there's some software out there. It'll definitely help you. But what we're going to do is learn what those fields mean. I call them the big three. Take away my call, because you did that one time, and that's set once. You are, or your call, where do I want to go? We'll have some examples of that. Repeat one is the repeater and module that I am transmitting into. For example, I'm going into the two meter module of KJ4GGV. So I would put in KJ4GGV space C. We'll talk about spaces. Repeat two, where do I want my transmissions to eventually go? And normally, for everything except simplex, that's a gateway. Whether you're planning on going out that gateway or not, go ahead and put it in there. So it's going to be the same call sign of that repeater with a G in the eighth position. We'll go through some examples. Now, as a part of just the plain gateway ICOM gateway software, known as G2, um, you have some basic functions. It provides the basic functionality of the repeater. It provides the basic authentication to the trust server and connection to the internet. But there's not a whole lot beyond that. You can do call sign routing, and you can do, um, I even forget the name of the function that they implemented in G2 multicasting, which no one really uses. It was an attempt, at, an early attempt at repeater linking. But along comes D+, written by a third party, Robin Cutshaw, AA4RC, Internet Labs. D+, is on most repeaters. D+, adds the functionality to be able to first accept DV dongles, DV access points, and other things like hotspots. And it also provides the linking functionality to directly link to another repeater or link to a reflector. So we're going to use these characters, G, E, I, L, and U, with functions that we'll be showing. Just you don't have to remember those right now. We're not going to test on them yet, but we will in just a few minutes. All right, the repeat one and repeat two format. The normal format is, you know, there are call signs that are, you could have a one by one special event. You could have a one by two, two by one, two by two, 
two by three max. So you can have up to anywhere between three and six characters in a call sign field. That call sign is always left justified, meaning that you start on the left side, the first character is the call sign. And you're going to want to put the module in the eighth position. Now we'll talk about some exceptions to that. So in the US and most of the world, the exception is Japan, I believe. C is always the two meter module. B is always the 70 centimeter UHF module. And A is the 1.2 gigahertz voice or data. Now here's some examples with different length call signs. If it's a six character, two by three call sign, and I want to go to the two meter module on each one of these examples, I have to have a space between WD, WD4STR space C. If it's a one by three, that's only five characters long, so I have to add two spaces. And then shorter, so add the appropriate number of spaces in just putting in the repeater and its module. Now this goes in repeat one and repeat two. We'll have some exceptions to that when we talk to UR, but that'll make sense. Here's your basic QSO. Here's what you need to program just to talk on your radio. My call, you set in there one time. Don't have to worry about that after that. UR is always CQ, CQ, CQ. Don't try to change it to anything else. CQ, CQ, CQ. Repeat one is going to be the repeater that you're going into with its module. Repeat two is going to be that repeater with a G for the gateway. So if you just want, if you go buy a radio today and you get on the local Dayton repeater, one of those is W8RTL. Let's say you're on the two meter module there. You're going to want to program, first you're going to set your call sign, my call, in that field. You are, you're going to put CQ, CQ, CQ. Then you're going to put W8RTL space, space, C, correct. And then space, space, G. And you'll be on the air if you're registered. Well, even if you're not registered, you'll be on the air. Because if that repeater's linked, you're going to follow it. What you cannot do if you're not registered is activate the linking functions on your own. But if that repeater is already linked and you're not yet registered, you'll still be able to go through. All right. When you want to link to a repeater, now, a lot of the functions I'm going to show you here, we're going to change one thing and one thing only. What's in the UR field? All right. So I want, I'm going in still to the KJ4 GGV repeater. And I've set all this other stuff, the frequency offset and the mode. I set my call. And I've still got KJ4 GGV space C and space G in repeat one and repeat two. But if I want to link that repeater to another repeater, I'm going to, in this case, go to WX4 GPB B, and I'm going to put WX4 GPB B L for link. Now, I'll key the mic. Now, if you're an anonymous Kerchunker, your days are numbered because the call sign, your call sign went out. People will be nice and say, I didn't get any audio from you, old man. So don't think you're anonymously Kerchunking. But when you do this, you know, it might even be good to say along with it, um, WB4 QDX linking to WX4 GPBB. Say that along with it. That's a courtesy. But all you do is key it, release. It will say remote system linked. And then on the data line on the bottom of your display, whether it's a mobile radio or a handheld, it will say linked to and whatever it's linked to. All right. So if I want to link, I issue a link command, and then I'm going to go back to this channel right here with the CQ, CQ, CQ. Now, if I want to link to a reflector, it's the same process, but I'm going to put REF, the three digits for the reflector, its module, 
and L. Same process. I'll link. I'll key. It'll say remote system linked. And then I go back to that CQ, CQ, CQ talk channel. Now, unlinking. Let me give you two rules. If a repeater is already linked somewhere, you cannot l issue another link command until you unlink it first. So you want to unlink, then issue the new link command. And you issue that by, again, what changed is the UR field. You don't have to put a call sign in there, but you put seven spaces and a U. Well. Well, you will, I, I think you will still need to do it with a D plus repeater. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk about the XRF and, and DCS reflectors today just because that's kind of another subject. There are some other reflectors out there, another series, and they function a little bit differently, uh, but they are part of the D plus network. But I want to talk about those today. Uh, that'll be D star 201. Uh, but, for the purpose of most of the repeaters that are running D plus linking, which are a good number of the US repeaters, most of them in fact, you will have to issue an unlink command before you link to another repeater, if it's already linked somewhere. Now, how do you know whether it's linked or not? Well, you can ask the repeater. And if you put an I in the eighth position of the UR key, now it's going to do two things. It's going to say either remote system linked, meaning it's linked somewhere, or it's going to say not currently linked. All right, that told me a little bit. It's linked if it said remote system linked, but where is it linked? That will scroll across the bottom line of your display. So if I do the I command, it'll say remote system linked, and then it will say link to REF020 alpha, for example. If it says not linked, then it isn't linked, and you can go ahead and issue a link command. Now another function, the E function, echo test. You can do this on a repeater, you can do this on a reflector. If you have an E in the eighth position, it's, this is like the echo function kind of on, um, Echo link or IRLP. You can key, say a transmission, unkey, and it will play that back to you. You can see, you can check your audio, you can check your audio level if you're running on a dongle or something. You can, you can um, check to make sure you're getting in to the repeater and not kind of dropping out. So that gives you some functionality there. All right, remember, we're gonna run, we're gonna have a quick quiz here. Don't worry, you're not gonna be scored on it. You are where I wanna go, what I wanna do. The eighth character defines the function, and here are those D plus functions for linking, unlinking, all those things. All right, let's take some quick practice. I'm on the KJ4 BDF repeater, and I looked it up in dstarinfo.com, and it, it's there on the top line. It's on a gateway, it's on 440.725, and uh, standard UHF plus five megahertz. All right, that's the information, the basic information, which would tell me the frequency, the call sign, and the offset. So just to program that in to talk on it, here's what I wanna do. Now, all these things in that top table are going to stay the same. What's in the bottom table, you will note, is what's going to change. So just to talk on that repeater, CQ, CQ, CQ is in the UR field. All right, now, here's where I'm going to ask you for questions. You want to hear your transmitted signal. I want it to echo back to me. I'll give you a hint. On the KJ4 BDF repeater, what am I going to program in my call. 
No, in my call. But I already did that one time, so do I have to do it again? No. What's in the UR field? Seven spaces and uh, the letter E. E for echo. What's in repeat one? No, repeat one. KJ4 BDF space. Now this is a 440 module. B. All right, everybody get that? KJ4 BDF. Now we were on E for the UR. So KJ4 BDF space B and space G. Got it? Here's the next one. I want to link this repeater to reflector 30 Charlie. What am I going to put in UR? All right, I heard it all. REF030CL. Everybody understand that? What I put in repeat one? Same thing. I didn't change anything from the last one. KJ4BDF space B. Same thing with repeat two for the G. All right, that's the answer, right? I want to unlink. The KJ4 BDF repeater. What's in UR? Seven spaces and a U. Did anything change in repeat one and repeat two? I think you're seeing a pattern here. We'll we'll show that up here. Question. No. The repeater will echo back to you. If you're on a dongle or a DVAP and you want to hear the reflector echo back, you can do it on, on that. All right, I'm going to link the KJ4 BDF repeater to another repeater, WD4STR port B. What am I going to put in UR? All right, I heard in the UR field, WD4STRBL. Is that correct? Hmm? What did I hear about a space? No, there is no space. You can only put eight characters in. There would only be a space if the call sign was shorter than a two by three. All right, so here's what I put in, right? Now, once I issue this command and it says remote system linked, what do I do? Go back to the CQ, CQ, CQ channel. All right. Let me talk about call sign routing. Let me see if I put this in here. No, I did not. Yes. No, when you unlink, the question is, when you link, you have to put in the call sign to module. When you unlink, you don't. That is correct. You can just have the U in the eighth position. But remember, that's got to still have the frequency and all this other stuff in there. So you can't just put one memory channel, for example, for unlink and it be generic for all of them. It would have to have the repeater information in there as well, back here. You can link to both. You can link to, in the pull down list, you'll get a li list of all the repeaters, and you'll also get a list of reflectors. No. No. You're just, the echo function is just going into the repeater that you're going into or to the reflector that you're going into. You can't echo off of a remote system remote repeater. Okay, does that make sense? Let's talk about call sign routing just a minute. I don't have an example of it. Let me tell you what call sign routing does and does not do. 
I'm not, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I'm not a big fan of call sign routing, and let me tell you why. When I, call sign routing is I want to talk to a specific person. If I want to talk to Chris, I'm going to put in the UR field K4FH. Now what happens? The system knows where K4FH last keyed up. Now he may be in Las Vegas gambling his life savings away or winning me millions of dollars. The system knows where he is, so I'm going in on my local repeater, and it's coming out on the Las Vegas repeater where Chris was last transmitting. So my signal, my voice was heard on my local repeater. It was heard on the Las Vegas repeater. But for call sign routing to work for him to call me back, he has to program the reverse route. Now he can do that by putting my call sign in the UR field and it will come back to me. Now all the radios have an, a key called RX-CS. Once that person transmits to me, I can press and hold that button and it will program my radio for the reverse path. That's fine. Let me tell you the problem with call sign routing. I tried to call Chris. I don't know whether there's a QSO going on in Las Vegas repeater or not. So I may barge in right on top of a QSO in progress. That's not too cool. So one of the better ways to do it, you should use call sign routing in a limited way. We have the situation that happens during one of our nets, the Southeast D-Star Weather Net, where we have 25, 35 repeaters connected together and about 50 to 75 users on Sunday nights. And there will be a Japanese station who has to use call sign routing because many of the, most of the repeaters there don't use G2 and can do linking. And they'll call sign route to one of the repeaters that's connected. And it will come out on every one of them. And he'll call once or twice. Now, not blaming the Japanese station because he didn't know there was a, a QSO, and in this case, a net going on. But he did it. So think about call sign routing and how limited it should be used. OK? Does that answer your question on call sign routing? All right. Next thing we want to do, OK, you understand how to put this information in the radio. Let's talk about a way to kind of organize this in your radio and then also update it. Yes? If you link to it. Mm -hmm. in my book, is to link to it if you know he's there. You know, it's, it's a great feature in D-Star. You don't have to know where he is, and you can call sign route to him, but the downside is I don't know what's going in, and I may barge in on that other end. Mm-hmm. That's a very good plan. Uh, there, everyone may not have heard what he said. His friend drives a truck, travels around, but he uses DPRS, so he'll key up every so often, and he'll know where he is. And then he can link to that repeater, and then you've got a direct connection. You know whether somebody's transmitting on that one or not, and you don't barge in. Good way to do that. Was there another question? Did I get both of them?
Here, here's one of the things that is kind of a standard procedure. If someone is using call sign routing, <coughs> excuse me, they will say that they are. Uh, I'm calling WA4YIH call sign routing. I'm on the WD4STRB repeater. Call sign routing to WA4YIH. He knows I didn't just link to that repeater and find him. Uh, and he can either reverse the link with the RXCS key or he can link those two repeaters together and then we can talk. So if you are call sign routing to someone, announce that you are doing that. Okay? All right, three ways to program your memories. You can do that with direct entry from the front panel. That's kind of challenging on just about any radio nowadays, right? Especially those $38 radios on Amazon. Good luck. All right, you can use software to upload to the radio. For D-Star radios, there's ICOM software and there's RT system software. Both are good. Both do some different things. And we'll, we'll demonstrate using both of those packages. I want to update because there's always, you know, unlike the FM repeater world, who's, they've been around for 40 plus years now, um, there's not too many new FM repeaters coming on. There's new D-Star repeaters coming on every day. So I'm going to want to keep updating my radio. New one came on down the road or down the hall, or I'm going to another city and I want to load those repeaters in. So if I have a place that I can download and update my memories, that'd be pretty handy, wouldn't it? Two ways to do that. If you're using the ICOM software, you can go to dstarinfo.com, go to, which tab is it, Ed? The uh, repeaters, and then there's some download sub tabs in that which you can download memories. Now that's, that works very well with the um, ICOM software. Those are called like, they're, they're labeled like RS-51 or RS-31 or RS-92 is the uh, numbers and names of those uh, ICOM software packages. RT Systems uh, is a company that has produced software for every one of the D-Star radios also. And they have a function that they have just updated uh, which they call the D-Star Calculator. The original D-Star Calculator was done by Ed over on the dstarinfo.com site, and you could just put in who you are, where you are, and where you want to go, and it would tell you what to program in those slots. That's a very handy thing, and that's been updated to show when you're downloading stuff, you can pull in some specific things that you want. RT Systems has also upload, updated their D-Star Calculator and you can pull in specific states or specific areas and, and do some neat things with it too. They both use the same database, which is the database of repeaters on dstarinfo.com. And it is, I'll tell you, it's the most complete listing of DSTAR repeaters anywhere in the world. Uh, thank you, Ed. And um, it's the most up to date because there's several methods used to keep that, that, up, that information updated, mainly from the users of those repeaters. We'll get a, a note from someone that said they'll send it to info at DSTAR info. Why isn't the El Paso repeater up to date? It changed frequencies. Well, you need to tell us and we need to update it. You can update it yourself in there. Or we use some other methods to uh, pull in that data as well. All right. Now, if you're using a 2820 or a 91 or a 92, um, you might want to set up your radio in a fashion like this. Here's what I do, and this worked well for me. Many ways to set up your memories. This is one way to do it. If I have one repeater in my area and one module, I'll allocate a block of memories. And every one of the D-Star radios since the 2200 has hundreds of memories. So I'll allocate, I'm using this one repeater in Atlanta. Which repeater am I going into, by the way, here? KF4SBAC. How did you tell that? 
All right, I allocate a block of memories, one through 10. Everything is the same in this except what field? And you see all those things we were talking about doing? So if I set those up as a block of memories, it's got CQ, CQ, CQ for talking, unlink, info or ID, and echo, and then I put my favorite reflectors in there that I like to typically link to. So I just go to that memory, click, go back to CQ, 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 and talk. If I want to unlink, I just go to that memory, click, go back to CQ, 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 or relink somewhere else. So anything I want to do with my normal favorites on that repeater are in those memories one through 10. Now, KI4SBA also has a B module. So I'll set up the same memories for 11 through 20 with the same functions. The only difference is the frequency, this information, and repeat one. Now, in the Atlanta area, we have about five or six sites, and each one of those has UHF and VHF on both of them. So I've got, I don't know, 10 or 12 groups that I use for traveling around Atlanta area. That's fine. I got plenty of memories. If I've used 12 blocks of 10, I only used 120 memories. Most of the radios have many more than that. So if I want to do anything, there's my talk channel, there's my ID, there I can pick one of those for my favorite for reflector linking, unlink, echo. So there's my block of memories. So for those radios, and I'll tell you why it's just those radios, that may be a good way for you to set up your radio. Make sense? All right. With the introduction of the IC80, and I still can't figure out from ICOM, what's the difference in an IC and ID in the, in the call? Someday I hope to get an answer for that. The 80AD and the 880H, the mobile version, um, with the introduction of those radios, something new was introduced called DR memories. And we'll talk about how to use those. That was extended and expanded in the 31 and the 51. Now, you might ask, hey, the number of regular memories went down when you got to the 31 and the 51, but the, the DR memories went up. Now, the function of the DR memories lets you very quickly and easily go between repeaters and UR functions because you have a to and a from. I've got a, uh, a handout that Ed put together, which is kind of a quick start to the 31 and 51 that will guide you through using the DR memories. And I'll let him pass out if anyone is interested in that. We're gonna talk about it right now. All right, with the, uh, with the DR memories, if, you have, if, if someone has their 31 or 51 with them today, you can follow along. Is there anyone who does not know how to use the DR mode or DR memories? Boy, it's, I didn't either when I picked up the radio. I wanted to program in the same way. I wanted to use my um, 500 memories just the way I did it before in blocks. I don't have to with this. The first thing you want to do if you're in a 31 or a 51 is press and hold the DR key and that's the bottom part of that four direction cluster. Now on your display you're going to see to and from, right? If you press the blue button, which is the select key in the middle, you're going to get a menu that says either repeater list, near repeater, and you've got two choices there. If I want to find the nearest repeater, 
The repeater list that's in there is geocoded with Latin long. The GPS in your 31 or 51 knows where you are. So if I want to select near repeater, I select that and it's going to give me a list of a few repeaters in order of distance, closest to distant away from me. And then I just hit the blue button to select it. Now if I want to select a specific repeater, instead of hitting near repeater, I would just select repeater list. And the next screen I'm going to see is a list of areas. They're grouped, usually by in the US, southeast, northeast, northwest, etc. And then you're also going to see out of the box uh, simplex or DVAP memories. I think it's down around number 23 or tw 22, 23 or 24, somewhere in there in your list. So I can select an area, then select a city, and that's all put in the from setting. Now the next thing I want to do is go up to the two, T-O, the two row. Now here's where I'm really changing what's in the UR field. So I can again hit the blue button there and I'm going to get a list of things. One is it's going to, this is kind of confusing. Ignore those first two on there where it says local CQ and gateway CQ. I don't know what those mean. I haven't learned that yet. But the third option on there is your call sign. Select that and you're going to see some of the functions like echo, unlink, ID. And then you're going to get a list of reflectors. So I can select a reflector and that's going to issue the link command. Now if I just want to talk on the repeater that I've selected down on the from line, select use repeater. And that issues the CQ, CQ, CQ. And then you're set to go. You're talking. So if you go buy a 31 or a 51 today out of the box, you can be on the air in five minutes by just doing that. And if you've got your little handy list there today, you can do that. That'll be a quick guide to get you through it. All right, now, all right. The 31 to 51 came with a factory load of a lot of repeaters. A lot of repeaters. That list is outdated. It's good out of the box to get you going, but it's outdated. So you need to update it. Now, you will need the programming cable to do that. And whether you're using the ICOM software, which is free, or you're using the RT system software, which you do have to purchase, but it's good software. You, or you can use the SD card that's in there. And if you take that SD card, or if you add an SD card to it, it doesn't come with it, you can do it off on a computer. And if you can write to that SD card, bring it in, and then load that file in. But let's do it, let's do it through the cable. Let's think about it that way. All right, the most up-to-date repeater list is found at www.dstarinfo.com. Both the ICOM using this site for downloading and the RT system software uses this information, same information. You'll see a lot of times when you have the RT system software, every time you may come back to it a, a week or two later and it says I got to update all these files. Well, yeah, you're updating the software, but you're also updating the repeater list and it's pulled down the latest one for that. So what I can do is download updated memory list and they come in if I'm um, getting them off of the dstarinfo.com site, they come in as a CSV file and then I can import them using the ICOM software for every one of the radios except the 2820. That software doesn't have an import function, sorry. Um, the RT system software, you can cut and paste between different radio versions. So it will let you do that. 
Now, RT Systems, as I said earlier, has a new D-Star calculator in there, and I'll, I'll bring that up and we'll show a little bit of it so you can customize your memories. All right, let's go through a couple of them, and I'll, I'll show you with both the uh, DSTARinfo.com site. I could really use a chair. Let's pass this one over here. Bear with me, we'll go through this. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the dstarinfo.com website. Gosh, you can't see the keyboard here, the lighting. Well, I do, and it's hard to type on this when it's in the dark. All right, if you haven't been to the site, here's what it looks like. Lots of good information. But I'm going to go to repeater list, ICOM software import files, and I'm going to first go to download. And here's one thing we learn. When I got my ID51 in January or February, there were 723 UHF and VHF repeaters in the US. Now there are 770. There are 750 memories in the 51. So I've got to cut my list down a little bit. All right, so depending on what kind of radio I got, I'm going to select that first. If I'm looking for a, a 92, an 880, an 80, uh, even the 7100 when it comes out, and the 9100 uh, or the 3151. I can download a regular memory list, and these will go into the regular memories if I have memory list. Then I select VHF and UHF, or what combination I want. I select the, the region, and in this case, I'm going to go down, uh, please forgive me for the Canadian friends here, I'm going to select a US thing. And I, I can select uh, a bunch of different ones or I can select them by state. I'm going to select Georgia because uh, I know it's going to have uh, quite a few. And I'm going to open it. Now what it's going to give me is a CSV file, so it's going to try to open Excel. And here's my list. Now if I go into the software, it's going to look an awful lot like this list. So I can take this list and save it. I could also put it on one of the little micro SD cards and then put it in the radio if my computer would let me write to that. Or then I can bring up the software and let's do it for, let's say a 92. And I can, there's my memory list. I'll put it in the first block of memories. And if I do a file import, then I can put the file name in there. I'll import it and it will come in. All right, I can do that for any of the radios and that's gonna load it in the regular memories. Let's say I've got a 31 or a 51 and I want to, uh, let me go back, got the memory list out. I'm going to go back to the site. I'm going to repeater list import. Um, well, let's do this a couple of ways. First, I'll do the same kind of download. Um, I want to do it for a 51. And then I want to put these in the separate list called the repeater list. So I'm going to repeater list. And then I'm going to select. And I'm going to put the southeast repeaters, let's say, in here.
Yeah, what Ed said was if you're running one of the E models instead of the A models for uh, North America, E is generally the European or some of the other non uh, North American, I think South American radios also use the A models. You'll Yeah, what he said was use one of your existing ones, save it, first go in and read the radio if it's brand new and have a file there for it. Then when you open that file back up and then you import into that one. So here I've got a new uh, one and these are just the southeast repeaters, but the same thing. Now you notice since this is a repeater list, it's geocoded. It's got the position in there so you can use that nearest repeater. So what I'm going to do then at that point is go to the 51 software. And again, I'm just using the ICOM version at this point. And here I'm going to want to put it in a repeater list. So I'm going to repeater list. And then I'm going to import and then that will write them into that list. So I can update my list. And I can do that and, and piece that together how I want to. All right, so that gives me an update to that. Now, if I'm using the RT system software, now see, remember, I can put them into the regular memories or with the 31 and 51, if I put them into repeater list, I'm not taking up those memories, I can put FM frequencies in there. I can put DVAP frequencies. I can do whatever I want with those. I can put out-of-band frequencies that I may want to receive, no weather, whatever. All right. Now, let's look at this from, remember I'm using the same database source, but I'm going to go to the RT Systems software. And RT Systems is going to be here tonight and talk about that, and they have a booth um, over in the main arena. So, uh, feel free to talk to them. They're good folks, and they'll really support you as well. I'm going to go to the 51 programmer. I can do the same thing with the 2820 um, or any of the models. I have software for these radios. I'm going to go to the 51. And it's going to open up. And if I just want to start fresh, now I want to use the D-Star calculator. And if I'm just using the regular memories, which it indicates down here on the bottom, I can bring those in and look at my source and blah, blah, blah. I can you know, bring up uh, what I want, the area I want, and do that. Now, in the DR memories, I do like this function in here, and I just learned about it this week from them. If I bring in um, DSTAR calculator, Excuse me, I want to be in, I'm in DR channels, remember how to do this. I just learned how to do this myself this week. It should be updated, I just used that this week. Well, it, I, I tell you what, it may not, well it should be, I was doing it on this one. Um, I, I think you're right, I'm not getting the, the advanced D-Star calculator. If I was, I would be seeing, because I updated, I didn't update this on my computer, I updated it on my desktop. I would get a much more advanced list and it would let me select by state and I can just pick the states I want or I could pick Canada, I could pick probably, I think I can even pick Canadian provinces in that, et cetera, and lets me pull that list down and instead of having to import it into the radio, it's going directly into my memory list here and then I just have to save it to the radio, which I'm using communications and send data to the radio. Now that's real handy. Question? If you want to update right now, should you update it? I could. I'd, first of all, I'd have to connect my radio to it, and then I'd read in my file, and then I would, um, I could update my, my radio with it. 
I'm updating the program and then I load it to the radio here. I, you're right. You're right. I thought I, I had it on my desktop, and I meant to update this one. Right. So I think I could, if I'm here, check for updates. There we go. That's right. So let's look at that real quick while we've got the time. They do. They do. Uh, Karen made a great video that goes through this process that's on their site. Yes? All right, that's not the clone cable. Um, if you've got the, if you've got the 3151, the 80, 880, and even the 2120, for data, they have a cable called the RTS-05. It's an orange cable. Uh, it's a USB on one end and the 2.5 millimeter with a very slim shield on it um, that will function. Now, you can't use it to program the 2820, but it will program the 3151, I think the 80 and 80, 880. Uh, you can't program the 2820 with that cable. It's the blue cable that goes in on one of the speaker ports for cloning. No, you cannot. Not with the RT system software. Yes. Of the 2820? I think that's news to me. If that works, I stand corrected. Talk to RT Systems and make sure. If that's the case, then you only need that cable, and it's a great cable. Yeah, one cable. That'll work with everything except the 92. Right. Now you're talking about the FM repeaters though, right? Huh? You're talking about FM repeaters? No, I'm talking about the D-Star repeaters from RT system. They've got that programming software problem right now. And if you want to, you know, program it with the city names, you have to first program it in the software with the call sign, delete it, and then re-import it again, and then put the call the city name, then it will still have the call sign and the repeater base. They're having that little problem. Yes. Um, okay. I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that, but it, it is a great way to update. And remember with the 3151, you can update the SD card outside and then come back in. I ran into this problem that they didn't do any update. It, take, it shows an error the first time, and you have to go through a second time, according to them. It's probably not happy with some of the others. Yeah, I know I'll have to close this one. It's going to first want to check for updates, then I'm going to close it. Well, I've got to. I don't know, but uh, because that's basic firmware uh, in the, the radio itself, I don't know whether that will be changed. Well, I don't want to take up our time doing that. But um, go by their booth. They'll demonstrate it for you there, um, and that will 
it, it's some good software. If you want the free software for the basic stuff, it's free on the ICOM site for the 80, 880, 31, and 51. That's free. RT Systems, one of the main things that it really gives you that's very nice is no matter what kind of radio you got, you can cut and paste between them. And so if you like your channel designation the same, um, that will make sure that, that uh, keeps it in that order. All right. We're, we're still over. Do you have one more question, Wayne? Okay, that should be very straightforward. And it should, your, your, lit, your uh, quick start guide should help you with that. But check with me during the break and we'll, we'll go through that again. Because when you get this, uh, the PowerPoint slides, when we post that, we'll have that information in there for it. All right, let's take a very, very quick break. Want to get you out of here as close after 11 as we can. <laughs> 